next item is the appointment of members to the Planning Commission. And Chandler, to present. Uh, we're excited to have uh, to begin a new year with the Planning Commission. Uh, we have a lot of things coming up on the document that we're really excited about, especially with the development of our area. Um, but we would like to say thanks uh, to all those that have so the Planning Commission. They've done a great job and we appreciate their service. Uh, so we would like to appoint uh, Glenn Dodge and Don Steele to new two year term, to, to new three year terms as regular members, regular voting members of the Planning Commission, with Glenn Dodge serving as the chair and John Don Steele as the vice chair. But we'd also like to appoint Brad Weber to a one year term in order to fill a vacancy that was left this year. And then we'd also like to appoint Jeff Dodge. Reg, Lori, and Spear to serve as alternate members for the term of one year. All these terms expire in December 31st, 2014, except for John, or except for Glenn Dodge and John Stone to expire on December 31st, 2016. Okay, any discussion, comments from council members? Can you read the names again? Yeah, Glenn okay. Dodge and John Steele to the full three year terms. Brad Weber to serve as a one year term. That is a voting member. And then the appointment of the alternates, and these also these serve one year, will be Jeff Dodge, John Bridge, and Lorianne Spear. Okay. So if there's no discussion, if someone would like to make a motion to affirm these appointments to the Planning Commission, I will entertain that now. I move. I'll make a motion to accept what's the names that you read. Discussion? Okay. Uh, we'll have a, a roll call vote from my left. Mr. Mr. Zapala? Aye. Mr. Gaddis? Aye. Mrs. Reese? Aye. Mr. Crawl? Aye. Mr. Augustus? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next item is a review action item on appointment of Mayor Pro Tem. This changes every year. Mr. Proctor, you're presenting. Of the constituent cities of the dispatch area. 
Um, so we'd really like you to be there so that um, if they decide to move forward with um, bonding for a new facility, if they um, feel that that's needed, that they would have your support, potentially, by, by explaining those needs. Anything else? That's it. Mr. Kedish, anything you want to say? No? Okay. Mrs. Mrs. Reese. Uh, nothing new on communications with Every Quiet. I did attend a YCC meeting today and they are actively working on the next three months of uh, putting together some community events that will also raise money for their tennis workshop program. Um, they're considering a Valentine's dance for the tweens in February and then a citywide dodgeball in March, but they're continuing to work at their discussion uh, options right now. Okay. I forgot to uh, take a moment for mayoral updates. And so, discussion had taken place regarding SR-146, that's Canyon Road, and UDOT's desire to turn it over to Cedar Hills and Pleasant Grove. And, and so, they have $4.4 million that they are willing to give for the uh, design and, and various areas that need to be fixed, the, the, the milling and then re, re, repaving. Um, Mr. Bumper and Mr. Daring from Pleasant Grove's um, believe it's around $10 million. So we're um, talking with MAG, which is the Mountain Land Association of Governments, in order to try and receive money from them in order to make up that difference between $4.4 and $10 million. So discussions are taking place. All relevant parties are involved the county, and UDOT, um, Pleasant Grove, Sturgis. And um, all I can say at this point is that everyone's hopeful. That road needs to be fixed, uh, but um, no decisions have been made yet. So, Mayor, do you mind if I just ask you a quick question on that? What's that? Can I ask you a quick question on that? Sure. Uh, I understand that they've, they've expressed that this is a low priority for them. That's correct. Have they given their reason for why, if it's a state road, they're not willing to, to maintain it at the level they of have. state? And so, road um, road. the county has stated that it, it would be a low priority with them if they were to actually take ownership. Uh, which at one point appeared to be the case, it doesn't appear to be the case anymore. UDOT has stated that it's a low priority with them. And I think it comes down to dollars, and there's only so many dollars that can be spread around. They just spent a lot of money. This is, I, it's not my words, it's theirs. They, they, they spent a lot of money on North Utah County Boulevard. And so they are lacking a lot of funds, but also um, saying that in their estimation, this will never rise to a level of importance that I think she would also does grow the like to. Yeah, it's just baffling to me that a state road, they, they would decide to disown it and not yeah. and, and and so take care of it. There's, there, there's probably a lot of roads that need to be fixed in the state, and they're trying to pick and choose, but they did say they do have 4.4 million now. And so that's why we're talking quite seriously about how to do this. And so if MAG is able to give us funds, if they're going through the allocation process that starts in a few months as well, we'll be making an, app an application for their funds. And if we can get close to $10 million, then um, and it's certainly worthy uh, study in terms of us deciding. But Pleasant Grove has to do this as well. So if, if Cedar Hills is interested in Pleasant Grove is not. We have problems. Pleasant Grove is interested in we're not. There's problems as well. So both cities have to be on board. Both, the city, both cities appear to be on board at this point. Okay. Is this something that we need to come to a vote of the council to approve? If, 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 if we're going to take over the road. Are, are you, oh, certainly. If, if, you know, if, there is, if there is the money that can be used to fix it, and you guys will have to that. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Crawley, I know you don't, you don't have anything to say, but um, because you haven't been to any meetings other than you do go to one finance meeting. Yeah, um, I just have a question for um, Mr. Munker. I didn't catch what that meeting was on the 14th. This will be February 13th. Oh, February 13th. Okay. And it will be similar to the town hall meeting that we had a year ago on emergency preparedness. So it'll, it'll, it'll be very similar to that one. Yeah, I don't have any. Okay. 
Mr. Gustus, I know that you may have limited speaking ability. Is there anything that you not need at this point? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, let's move on now to item number eight, which is what I skipped to before. That's the appointment of Mayor Pro Tem and Mr. Rucker, you are presenting. <laughs> Mayor and Council within a year, um, and consistent with uh, the Utah Code annotated and our city code. Um, under the section mayor as a member of the city council, the terms of the scope of the mayor temporary are defined. And basically, in summary, if the mayor is <coughs> ever uh, absent or unable to perform his duties as mayor, then our mayor pro tem would uh, uh, step in and take on the role of mayor. Uh, protocol in the past has been that we rotated council member to council member uh, to be more prepared for It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, council member Martinez, uh, former council member Martinez, council member Reese have also uh, been prepared for Tim. And if we did the same cycle that we did before, then this year council member Augustus uh, would have served in that position. Any questions? Okay, so it is my prerogative, uh, I guess, to suggest that uh, Council Member Augustus be appointed to this. It's a review action item, so if someone would like to make a motion to make that effective, I'll accept that now unless um, you want some more discussion. Uh, I move that we elect Council Member Augustus as Mayor Pro Tem, who shall have all the powers and duties of the mayor during his absence, disability, or refusal to act according to the state and city codes. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? I second. Motion's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. Okay, very good. Next review action item, um, setting time and place for the regular city council meetings for 2014. And this is Lovie, I think, it's presenting, but I do not see her. I'll present okay. for her tonight. Um, so this was on our, on our agenda. There was a question uh, last time the last city council meeting, there was a question if uh, we wanted to stay with the uh, regular Tuesday nights for our city council meetings. Um, we, we tabled it from the last city council meeting for further discussion. So on the uh, agenda for tonight is uh, a list of dates. Um, times would all be 7 o'clock p.m., but in your packet you should have bi-month dates. Those dates are Tuesdays. That's the first and the third Tuesday have been meeting. Um, so that is still before you um, on a Tuesday night. So do you have any more discussion on that? I know that, Daniel, that you had expressed it, a desire to have it on another day. And um, I'm fine with another day. I, I did see that there was much momentum on that. But I'm open to that. So. Yeah, I don't know that we heard from your face, so I'm not sure what um, Councilmember Crawley or Councilmember Augustus with their availability is on, on Wednesday night. I think Thursday night is out um, from discussing with other, other members of conflicts, but Wednesday is, is a possibility if, if that was okay with Wednesday was right for me. What's that? Wednesday's great for me. One of the things that was a little tough for me because I'm kind of in the same position where I've got better responsibilities that night, but I could make it work, but my preference would actually be for Tuesday. And, and I think Councilman Geddes is in the same position. Yeah, right uh, Tuesday my well. preference is Tuesday as well. Uh, I think since I'm the only one pushing for it, I will yield to the Tuesday night. Sorry about that. So, all right. uh, looks like we are set for Tuesday, so pending the approval of this um, set of dates. I can go ahead and make a motion if you'd like. Go ahead. I move that uh, we adopt ordinance number 2013. 
Any opposed? Very good. Let's move on. Next item, also a, a review action item, making assignments to members of the city council staff, residents of certain <coughs> boards, committees, and entities. Mr. Bunker. Mayor and Council, um, there are several boards, committees, and, and entities that uh, certain city council members, staff, or residents sit on. And um, according to our, our code, the mayor will make assignments to those various boards, committees, and entities. Um, with the advice and consent of the city council. And in your packet, you should have a list, and there is quite a list, um, of the different boards um, and committees and positions. So you would not be, you would not be um, doing anything with the city council positions, even though that's on the list. Starting with city recorder, Colleen Mulvey, City Treasurer David Bunker, um, Planning Commission members Glenn Dodge, Don Steele, Craig Clement, David Driggs, Bradley Weber, Jeff Dodge, John Dredge, and Lori Mitzkeer. Uh, Board of Adjustment Priscilla Leak, Jeff Lindstrom, Jared Louder, Randy Geary, and there's one vacant position on that board. North Valley, Utah, uh, North Utah Valley Animal Shelter, Chandler Goodwin, Timpanoga Special Service District. Beautification, Recreation, Parks and Trails with the uh, Boyd Wilkins as chair, members uh, Adrian Jushaw. Jushaw, thank you. Melissa Willie, Nick Ivins, Lynn Gray. <laughs> Family Festival Committee Chair, uh, Jerry Ann Conroy, Cherry Lacht, Keith Irwin, members Daryl Hackman, Angie Branch, Ben Cahoon, Emily Cox, Angela Johnson, Rob Olson. Joe Phelan, Maddie Prophet, Michael Stein, Phil Civilli, Marissa Wright. On the, um, and that would be, that, excuse me, on the Town Hall Citizens Committee, uh, Angela Johnson and Darren Lauber. Now we could be missing some names there if you guys think of other people that either should or should not be on. Um, Angie Branch asked to be released after last year from the Valley Festival Committee. And then we haven't officially put Marisa on the uh, ordinance yet. Do we not need to do that resolution? That would be tonight. Okay. So if she's appointed on this list, then, then she'll be she will. Okay. That's only why I see it's different. So what we're doing then is um, first going to uh, approve the, res the res resolution that you have in front of you. Um, and then after that, then that makes effective all the appointments that Mr. Conford just went through. So probably a good idea to read through the resolution, make sure you're comfortable with that. And while you're doing that, then I'm kind of explaining my uh, rationale regarding mayoral assignments. And uh, mm -hmm. I, it's my intent to rotate assignments every year. So you will probably, uh, or hopefully, retain one assignment, but then you'll give up some assignments as well. So that I think by doing this, It'll allow council members to have a much broader, much deeper understanding of a lot of different areas within within the city. So I know it can be frustrating in the short term, in the long term. I think it's really in the best interest of um, how we run how we run the city. So everyone has received their assignments. So are we doing two different resolutions? One for one for staff and residents, and one for council, or is it just all together? It's all together. Okay. All together. Yes. I just have a question. Um, what is the town hall citizen committee and what is their responsibility? Well, can they be greater than the okay. sure. They do not be regularly. We had, um, when we went through the mayoral and council member appointments, um, when we had some vacancies, we had some residents who were interested in, um, who, had, who had applied for that position and had expressed interest in having more town halls. Throughout the city, and these two individuals were the ones who, who wanted to um, really spearhead that effort, but they haven't met since last town in the river. So, any, anytime there's a need for a town hall meeting, I feel like they, they would like to get involved in that going is for getting that. Uh, we use their assistance. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry. 
So I have a couple of questions, brother. So hopefully you can understand what I'm doing. Um, on all of these, have all of these been formally created? Because there's a lot on here that I don't recognize. Um, for example, celebrations and events, was that actually formally created as a committee? Um, the Call Finance Advisory Committee, that was discontinued after they presented their findings, correct? Water. Well, of course, well, of course finance committee. I don't believe that was discontinued. I think that was the. Uh, there was a golf committee that was uh, dis that was disbanded, but not the golf finance advisory. Just so has that been formally treated as a committee by name? Then that's not an ad hoc committee. That's an ad hoc committee. That's just an ad hoc. But is there a permanent committee, or is it was it just a temporary? It is, it, is, it is an ad hoc committee, so there, so it's not a permanent committee, but it hasn't been disbanded. And so um, I, I have talked to some of the members who feel like they would like to have um, another meeting kind of just to talk about the changes that have been made, and then at that point discuss whether it should be disbanded or, or whether it should be made a permanent committee. So that's the only reason I think it's still in existence is they want to have another meeting. Okay. There isn't a timeline on ad hoc committees. It, it doesn't say that it has to be three months or six months. It just means it's not a permanent committee. So. Right. It was just my understanding when the committee was done was that was kind of the end of it. And then if something else wanted to start, then there was going to be a new committee created at that point. Yeah. You're, well, you're definitely right that it is an ad hoc committee, which means it's not permanent. And so now I think that within the next four or five months, which is when they wanted to have a committee, at that point, a committee meeting with the, kind of like a town hall meeting. So at that point, then, um, if the council wants to continue that to make that a permanent committee so that it, it meets once a year and, and updates on the golf course, then we can do that, or we can disband it, because it's done, it's done its work. Okay. Um, Cultural Arts Committee? Has not been formed yet. Yeah, we have not formed that committee yet. So how do we add these two to this? Organized if they're not formal committees. Uh, um, we can take that off, and we'll and when we uh, formally make the committee, then we'll appoint them to it. Okay. So as far as this list goes, then I would kind of like to go through it and make sure all of them are removed that aren't formally created. Because I don't think that we can have them on this list without them being formally created. So it would be cultural arts and water conservation. So water conservation. Oh, that's right. So just cultural arts committee. Economic development? That's not a committee. But it's not an entity or anything else. For Mike Davis, it's a planning commission and economic development. That's just an assignment. That's an assignment of a committee. Not a committee. Are you looking at her behind yes. Mike, behind uh, Council Member Davis' name, where it says planning commission, economic development, and celebration slash events? Right. So those are just assignments that it's not a committee. Okay, well that's what I'm wondering. Do those have to be formally recognized in order to create them or to have them as an assignment? No. Well, the, mayor can, the mayor can just assign that to a certain council member and okay. ask them to take that up and put it as a assignment. So okay. yeah, that's not a committee, that's just an assignment. Okay. Um, in the community covenant program? Say it again. The community covenant program? Yeah, I know. Is that something that's been established? Yes. So I took that on when I was the first went to become a council member. The Army reached out to us and, and asked us to become a community covenant partner. Oh, okay. So we we worked with that, and now we are a community covenant city, and we have several businesses in the in the community that are community covenant partners. But there's nothing ongoing with that. And I guess maybe the one thing I'm trying to clarify is because at the very top it says assignments to boards, committees, and entities. And to me, those should be formally recognized as a body, a board, or an entity where things like economic development, like you said, is an assignment, but it doesn't meet what's listed at the top of the page. So economic development is something that I would say is what you were on. That, that was your assignment last year. I just, I think we called it development last year. I don't think so, because I was never on something like that. Yeah. 
Um, all I'm saying is at the top, it says boards, committees, and entities. So maybe in the resolution we need to change it to boards, committees, entities, and assignments? Okay, something like that would be fine. To me, it was just a little confusing as to what these actually are, because these haven't been formally recognized, even though the top says that, by definition, they are kind of formed out of a group of people coming together for a common interest. I'm fine having assignments. The other question I have, um, under the mayors, it also lists employees and council. How is that handled? Because theoretically, the council and the mayor are on the same level in our work charter. The council doesn't report to the mayor, but to me this shows that the mayor would be over the council. And same thing with employees, because the employees report directly up to the they don't report to the mayor. So I'm just trying to figure out how the structure of this works and what the relationships are within this ordinance. Um, the, the I'm mayor, having a hard time understanding you know, what you're saying. Well, I'm doing the best I, I know you're I trying hard. <laughs> so um, you're talking about employee um, um, re reporting to someone? Is that what you're talking well, about? Well, on here, under your assignment or board or committee or whatever. Where it says employees? It says Gary PD employees. Yeah. So what exactly does that mean? And so uh, I believe that in the state code it says that all employees report to the mayor. Well, our org chart for the city shows that they report to David. Well, they do, but the mayor has, has the responsibility of administration under his uh, responsibilities. So and that's what I'm trying to make sure that this is clear so that our residents understand what this is. Because right now, I mean, I've looked at this with my wife and she had no idea what this meant. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I can tell you, I mean, is, is that in terms of, uh, if you're asking if we can change the org chart of the city, probably. If you're asking if we can change the code of the state, no. No, I know that. I'm not asking that. I, I do know where these things that are listed for Gary, they're the same things that were listed other than the golf course finance committee and the, the newer ones. They're the same things that were listed under him now and under Eric Richardson. It hasn't changed. Well, just because they were listed before doesn't mean they were correct. I, I'm just not, I guess it's never come up as an issue before. Well, that's why I'm asking now. I'm just asking for clarification as to what these mean. Because I don't understand them. Yeah, this, I mean, I think I, I think I see where Charles is coming from in the sense that um, we already have city ordinances that lay out the scope of the duties of the mayor. So the purpose of this resolution tonight is not to reaffirm the already existing duties of the mayor, it's to make appointments onto various councils and to make appointments to, to council members to have various responsibilities. And so it just seemed a little bit odd to restate things that we already know and be a power to have city employees report to. It's not like you're making an assignment. And to me, they're almost a little bit in conflict with each other on some of these. They're almost in conflict. Some of them seem like they're almost in conflict to how our other ordinances are written within our code. And to me, I'm going to have them taken out of here and have them addressed in our specific ordinances under the duties for the mayor or the council. Though I will say that the way it's worded now also goes on our website. So this isn't just for us, it's also for our residents to understand who handles what. So, Councilmember Augustus, are you saying that because the code already states uh, the mayor is uh, responsible for the city budget, the employees, those kinds of things, it's already stated there, you're saying not to put them here for a, but it doesn't talk about like utopia or mag or anything, so you're saying leave that in. Yeah, if it's utopia or something else that's a defined party that the mayor either sits on a committee or as a board member, I'm fine with that because it's not listed under his duties as an ordinance. So I think they need to be two separate issues almost. I don't think they should be listed here and by ordinance under our duties, either for the mayor or council. Are there any other than the budget and the employees that you see as an official? Or under the council? I can't 
And of those that I don't want to see there, and like I said before, any of the ones that haven't been fairly defined um, or that we actually need to create, I think they need to be left off until the time I'm created. Okay, so if we were to remove budget employees off of the assignments, Budget employees and council. Council's after finance committee. And the council arts committee. I'm fine with that. Doesn't doesn't change the facts on the ground, but it clarifies things. I'm fine with that. And then uh, as far as on the second page, we have the cultural arts committee that we would take off, and we would also remove Angie Branch off of that. Also, Gerald Hockey was moved. Is he supposed to still be listed there? We haven't been told he's not going to be part of it if we can ask. I'm pretty sure he's out of the city. We had to find out about that then. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I saw him at Walmart. He, I think he still is in the city. Oh, the game is boundaries? I thought he was on boundaries. I think he'll have to let us know at this point. When I signed no, up over, over Christmas, he said he was still in still in San Okay, so those are the only changes that. Uh, in, are there any other changes? You see, Councilor Gray has this. Uh, I will say, actually, one of my assignments. Um, it shows that I'm under finance. Honestly, I think with all the work that Daniel Zafala has done with his website and the budgets and everything. Personally, I think he's more suited to do that than I am, but if this is the way it's laid out, then that's the way it's laid out. I have enough other things on my plate, I'm happy to share that responsibility. I figured you would. What would you have said? He, he Trent was, was expressing that uh, he felt that I was qualified to serve on the Finance Committee because I've done the budget website, which is true. I'm sure you are. But and I also have lots of things to do, and so I'm happy to share responsibilities. And all I'm saying is, I can't do the website. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to do the website. When I'm trying to, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it awesome out. Job. Well, I'll definitely keep it I think this goes to my point, which is that, um, Daniel, I believe you, you may have some expertise in finance, and you've served, you've served on that campaign, and would serve on there ably well. And Trent, you emailed me saying that you that you're not a finance guy. I think that's my point of wanting to rotate positions, is that it gives us broader, deeper understanding of the different positions. So while you may not have, you know, the uh, understanding of finance that you think is necessary to be on the committee, I'm hopeful in a year from now you will have thought that it was worth the worth the time. Right. I understand that part of my reasoning for that was also the time commitment to it, where I don't have the flexibility to meet. Um, during staff hours a lot of the time. And so that would be a hard assignment for me if I'm required to come to a meeting and I can't be there for the committee. Okay. So and you, and if you think that is an issue, I'm happy to, okay. to take that on if you'd rather, if you don't think you're available for the meetings. Whereas I do have the flexibility to do the meeting and staff, I'm happy to take it on. Yeah, I'm saying I don't. And so that's one of the things that I had addressed is that my preference for one of the other committees was so that I would have the ability to actually attend that committee. Yeah, so I think that. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, I'm going to stay with the same assignments um, that, I, that I made. Mm -hmm. And um, if and so why don't we keep you on the finance committee for a little while? If you cannot make the meetings at all, then and you, and you want to be released from that, then I can reassign that or not. And um, if we can work around your time schedule, maybe do it during a noon hour or something like that, then we can try and do that. But uh, I would suggest that we stick with the assignments, and then if we need to make adjustments, um, we will. You okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Can I make a motion? Uh, are we on resolution B? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait. The other one was the ordinance. Oh, the same. Okay. 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 I move that we approve resolution 1-7-2014A, a resolution making assignments to members of the city council staff and residents of the city of Cedar Hill, Utah, to certain boards, committees, entities, and assignments with the following changes. That the title will say assignments to board, committees, entities, and assignments. That under Mayor Gary D, we will remove budget, employees, and council from his responsibilities um, in, the, in the description. From the Family Festival Committee, we will remove Angie Branch. And 
and that we will remove the cultural arts committee until that committee is formally created. Okay, I have motions or a second? Second. Any further discussion? Okay, Mr. S Mr. Spall. Aye. Mr. Gibbs. Aye. Mrs. Reese. Aye. Mr. Crowell. Aye. Mr. Augustus. I'm still going to vote today. Okay. Motion, mo motion passes. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next item. Or ordinance amending Title I, Chapter 6, Officers and Employees. Mr. Bunker, you're presenting it. While he's coming up, uh, I see that Mrs. Sperry, you came in. We took care of your point earlier, and you are in your group. I just want to make sure we didn't uh, yeah, get them my ends. Were we going to do IP 11? We, we can do this, but it's out of order. We're going to IP 11, which is uh, an ordinance amending the portable utility shed. <coughs> charge people just want to make sure that what they're doing is in accordance with the code. 
Uh, however, whenever there's a the shed that's proposed at 160 square feet, you really don't have a code that says you can go to and say, okay, does this meet this code? You know, it's, it's over 120 square feet where we have code, and it's under 200 square feet. So it, it just gives us something to, to go off of when we're uh, issuing. So someone has to build something in that range? And yeah, we, yeah, yeah really we, we don't really have the code that, that we can point to and say, here's why you have to call those rules. So I think it gives us a little bit more structure. I do have a couple of other questions for you. So in the proposed amendment, it uses uh, this phrase uh, where the property is located on a corner lot, the probable utility ship may be located within the optional enclosure area. Explain to me what an optional enclosure area is. The optional enclosure area would basically be, um, it's kind of like a uh, parking park on the side of the lot. It's, it's a wider area, so, so a setback on a, on a corner lot, they have larger setbacks. Like so on a normal lot, there's a lot on both sides. Setback like in Cedars West here would be five feet on both sides of the property. Now if you're on a corner, the one the side that is adjacent to a home is still five feet. But the side that's adjacent to the road is 20 feet, so that would be the optional enclosure area. So it's a bit wider. We're still allowing them to build uh, sheds in that area. But <coughs> uh, everyone stays out of the Fairview area, which, which is where the kind of cars go around cars. And um, when it says no portion of such structure is permitted to cross the property line, yeah. isn't that already enforced with the setback? It, it, it is. So see, so people can people can build a portable utility shed on a in a setback, right? So yeah. the, the footing, the footing, the, the, footing the, the base of the shed could be you know, a foot off the property, but the eave could hang over the property line and drain onto the neighbors. So that's just oh, nice. clarifying. But they could otherwise build a shed right up to the edge of the property line. As long as it doesn't drain the neighbors. If the roof is straight up, there's no ease. I didn't notice that. So the setback is kind of not enforced then on the property line. It's not enforced on the property line. Yeah, it's not enforced on the property line. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.
on the first Monday in February, calling a municipal, or at least by February, calling a municipal election, the mayor, uh, with the advice and consent of the council, would appoint a qualified person uh, to the offices of city recorder and treasurer. And by state code, those are the only two offices that have to be appointed by the mayor. And it would be the mayor who would do those, not the city manager. And so that's why that uh, section B was changed. Section C, um, we, uh, we actually are the title for our uh, finance director is finance director, not city accountant. So that's why that was changed. Um, so our city attorney did um, give some feedback on that. It feels like this does comply with state code. It does not take away any of the city council's ability to make changes to um, department head level uh, positions, uh, regardless of the time of year, whether that's election year or not. Um, and so I discussed that with, uh, with our legal counsel. Yeah, it wouldn't limit the council in any way, shape, or form just because it's not an ordinance.